Today we're going to check out this unique amplifier from Precision Power from their Power Class lineup, which hit the market back in 2021 as dealer direct only, now available on Amazon. Let's take a closer look. The current lineup of Precision Power Amplifiers includes the Black Ice, the Ion Series, the Atom Series, which we just recently tested the 1800 watt version. Check the link in the video description, you can see that video. Also they have the Power Class Series, which includes two four channel amplifiers, one five channel, and two mono blocks. These Class D amplifiers are said to be audiophile grade and have top quality toroidal transformers. What I use for the toroidal coil, 40,000 at zero ohm, zero. These are stated to have Sankin transistors from Japan, as well as WEMA resistors and capacitors from Germany. I'm not only a YouTuber, I'm also a German engineer. This is not a Mickey Mouse program! According to Precision Power, this move follows the brand shift to a dealer direct model with minimum advertised prices. 319 to 449 on these, and these amplifiers are overproducing as far as power goes. We'll find out about that. After nearly three years from their introduction, you can now find these models on Amazon, sold directly by Epsilon. $119.99 for the PC1000.1D. You know at that price we had to get one in so we can check it out. Let's find out what this amp is all about. Right off the bat, you can tell this was designed for the retail market because the box, they obviously spent a lot of time and a lot of money in the design of this box. Looks really super cool. On the shelf of any store, this would stand out, showing the guts on one side, showing the front of the amplifier on the other. Talking about all the different components and all the different benefits of the Power Class amplifiers. You know, low noise, optimal component layout, differential inputs, two ounce copper traces, all kind of good stuff. Sinking transistors from Japan. We're gonna find out all about this amplifier, but first let's open it up and see what's inside. First off, you'll see the 1.0 to 4 gauge adapters. This lets you use zero gauge input wire with the power terminals. And then we're gonna pull the rest of the amplifier out here and then we'll get to all the goodies. First up, we will notice the owner's manual which covers all five models. Again, there's two four channel, one five channel and two mono blocks. There's some zip ties and some screws in there as well. Next up, we have the mounting plate. This amplifier is designed to mount vertically which does save room. It'll fit behind the seat of pickup trucks and uh, seems pretty useful to be mounted vertically like that. Also, we have the remote base knob. Now this one is attached at the back and it has a clicky volume knob, which you can't hear there because I'm using the volume. But uh, it also has a 3.5 millimeter that doesn't screw in. So not our favorite style base knob. And here is the Power Class 1000.1D amplifier. And you can't tell just by looking at it, but this thing feels and exudes quality. I mean, it feels like it's built very well. Everything fits super tight together. It just looks super clean. I am a fan and thumbs up of the design and the build quality of this amplifier. I am uh, cheering for them for it to do its rated power. Here on the back of the amplifier, you'll notice we have RCA inputs and outputs. These are Tiffany style, or AKA panel mount. Very high quality, very nice. Also we have speaker outputs, those are eight gauge and the plug there for the remote base terminal. We'll take a closer look here at the Tiffany style inputs. Look nice. Again, there's output so you can send it to your other amplifiers. Also, we have four gauge for power and ground, a small 12 gauge for remote, and a 100 amp fuse that's built into the amp. Did not come with an extra one that I noticed in the box, so make sure you have an extra fuse just in case you need one. On the front of the amplifier, there are four screws which hold in this aluminum panel which looks really nice, it's polished aluminum. And behind that you have some additional controls including your gain, your bass frequency, which is variable, which is always nice, your bass boost, your phase shift, 
your subsonic filter, your low pass filter, and the power and protect LED. Now, the bass frequency being adjustable, I've always said before that's nice. It's adjustable from 100 hertz down to 30 hertz. The bass boosts 0 to 18 dB. As far as dimensions go, on the bottom, 13 inches for the length. On the top, 11 inches for the length. And then the other dimensions include 8 inches for the height. And then for the width, at the bottom, it's 3.2 inches. And at the top, it's 2.2 inches. So it's all kind of different geometry going on here. Just don't let your math teacher know. She might want you to figure out the volume of this. As far as power goes, 300 watts at 4 ohms, 600 at 2 ohms, and 1,000 at 1 ohm. Also, those numbers are stated at less than 1% distortion and tested at 35 hertz. So that's going to very much simulate the certified test on our amp dyno. So you know we got to get this amplifier hooked up and crank up the amp dyno so we can do these tests. On the left, you'll see the power output in watts. In the middle, the ohm load. On the right is the voltage of the dyno. We'll also have the remote clamp so that we can calculate the amplifier's efficiency. Hold on to your butts. First up, we're going to try the 4 ohm test. The amplifier is rated 300 watts at 14.4 volts at less than 1% distortion. The certified test here is at 40 hertz. Let's see. Oh, there you go. 372 at 14.48. This is looking good. This one actually beat its rated power. Thank you, Precision Power. Now let's try it uncertified up to the clipping point. We should get a little bit more. And we do. 389 right at 14.4 volts. Next up, we will try the dynamic test, which sends a 40 hertz pulse tone into the amp to check out the amplifier's ability to have dynamic headroom. And here we go, over 400 watts. The voltage is a little bit strong. 414, 14.54. Now we'll try two ohms where it's rated 600 watts at 14.4. Certified test is first as always. And we're a little bit shy, 564, 14.38. So about 36 watts shy of the rating. Let's see if we can get that 600 up to clipping. And yes, we get up to clipping easily, 644 at 14.28. So do you consider that a pass? Hmm, I don't know. It said it would do it in certified mode. <laughs> Didn't quite get there. Well, let's try the dynamic test, sending the pulse tone into the amp. And well above the rated power, well above 700 watts, 733, 14.45. Ready. Next up, the one ohm test. Now we did come up a little bit shy on the two ohm test certified, but we're crossing our fingers here that we can get a thousand watts certified at mm -hmm. one ohm and Ooh. no, <laughs> 855 at one ohm, 14.27. I know that's not 14.4, but it is very close. We're gonna show here, give it some more voltage after we do the uncertified test. Can we get it uncertified? No, 935, but again, we're a little bit under 14.4. So we're gonna crank up that voltage, give this amplifier more than 14.4 volts and try it uncertified to clipping, see if we can get this 1000 watts, can we? Oh, so close, not quite. 978 at 14.58 volts. Now when we send the dynamic track into the amplifier, we easily get the 1000 watts. We get over 1200, 1247, 14.47. Now here are the results, including the eight ohm test, which I didn't show, and the efficiencies. Efficiencies were good at eight ohms and four ohms, but at two ohms and one ohm, it dropped significantly. I'd like to hear what you guys think about these results. It made almost rated at uncertified, but did not do it at certified. Now, if you want to see the lower test, including 0.8 and lower, watch to the very end of the video and we'll show that. Let's move on to some flexing tests with the Savard Sub. Let's try a little old school feel the bass, DJ Magic Mike.
let's try the woofer test and try not to shake my little meter here off of the table. After doing several tests with the Savard subwoofer letting it flex, we tested the outside of the amplifier. You can see here it warmed up to almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit there at the back and the side it was in the upper 90s. We'll look at the inside of the amp later and find out the temp. Speaking of the inside of the amp, let's take off some screws here and slide this panel off again. Quality here looks super nice the way this fits, tight. And here are the guts, but before we look at the guts, let's check a look at these thermals. I tried to get it off as quick as I could so we could see right there. You'll see the choke that's for the output, 122 degrees Fahrenheit, which nothing out of the ordinary here. You will see the reflection there on that cover of the transformer. But yeah, this thing inside looks just like it does on the box. Very nice, very good looking amplifier. Anybody who looks at this, even if you don't know anything about components and amplifiers, will think this is really nice. Here are Micon caps. Now, we were expecting to see Wema. Not sure what's up with Micon. These must be German caps, I guess. 105 degrees Celsius. And it says there's Wema resistors and capacitors, but I didn't see any Wema capacitors inside the amp. Now, the ones that are in here, 25 volt, 2200 microfarad for the input filtering. And for the rails, we have 80 volt, 2200 microfarad there on the outputs. Now, the transistors in this amplifier are said to be Sankin, according to all the documentation they have, Sankin transistors from Japan. So is it here? Now, these are not Sankin. These are international rectifier for the outputs as well as for the power supply now, Sankin transistors are typically using class AB amplifiers and wouldn't be used in class D. So I'm not really sure why they would say they had Sankin. I'm going to smack my head here and say, what's up, PPI? If they're just plain out lying to you, lying to you, lying to you, we are here and we're going to report it because that's what we do. Dick Riculous here, WBIGD TV. Let's move on to the pros and cons of this precision power power class amplifier. First up, build quality is super nice. The unique looks, I like it. Value for the money at the current price, $120, is unbeatable. Vertical mounting seems like it would be very useful. Tiffany inputs, RCA in and out. Base remote is included. Is it low ohm capable? We shall find out at the very end of the video. Things to be aware of, measure power at one ohm camp, a little bit shy. Power input terminals, you might want to use those adapters they gave you. Single speaker terminal, we like to have multiple terminals for multiple subwoofers. Adjustments behind the panel, you have to take off four screws to get to those. And the components are not as stated. What's up with the Sankin and Wema when they're not really Sankin and Wemas? Anyway, disregarding those facts, let's talk about the quality here for the price. Now these originally were well over $300. And these were dealer direct. At the current price, I think it is a steal. And I really like the look. I think these one day may be collectible just because they are so unique. And at $120, I mean, it's really a no-brainer. I think, uh, yeah, and you wouldn't be unhappy using this on your subwoofers. It sounded great on the subwoofer. And it's got a lot of adjustments. The bass knob isn't the best. But um, I really enjoyed this amplifier. Just camp a little bit shy of the one ohm test. But overall, for the price, it is hard to beat. Stick around to the end to watch the extra test. Ran an additional test here at 1 ohm at 100 hertz to see if we could get that 1,000 watts, even though they said they tested at 35. And again, we're still about 40 watts shy, so we didn't make the 1,000 watts there either. Now let's try 0.8 certified at 40 hertz and 888, 14.26. We did not run the uncertified test because the 100 amp fuse would not have handled it. So here you can see it, almost 1500 watts, 1475 
at 14.43, jumped to 14.83 right there at the end. Now we'll try 0.67 again. We didn't try the certified test because I don't think the fuse would have survived, but here we go. Send the 40 Hertz pulse track over 1500, over 1600. Are we going to get any more? 1677, 14.39. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here.